Hello. Hey, can you see me? Can no, not me? yet. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Morgan. Oh, <laughs> I missed you so much. Uh, the same for me. Same for you. I mean, likewise. I uh, I actually saw a little bit of the the chat that you had with Keneally yeah. a few weeks ago, and I I got a little bit emotional just watching the two of you as well as now talking you know with us because we were on the same trip so. I could um, um, feel the vibe that you expressed between you, the two of you. So, yeah. So here we are. I, I don't. We haven't. Uh, we only texted and stuff. We haven't skyped or Facebook. No, no, no. And it's all. It's almost. Well, not almost. It's exactly uh, one and a half years. Yeah. It was this. It was December, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the first part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, huh? How 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 many things changed, right? And uh, how quickly time passed in a way. It's really really crazy. Yeah, I I, I know, and um, it's uh, nobody could um, expect this to to happen i'm sure uh, even even the second part of the tour when we finished the us part nobody i mean no way this it wasn't in any any of our minds this level of um, chaos you know for sure but you know for me it kind of was it's really strange but i and i, I said this before to somebody else but when i was in japan with Stickman, right? And yeah, yeah. we only we only played one show, and then um, I stayed for another three days or so. And when I went to the airport, like first of all, this you know the motorway was empty, and then the airport was empty, like Narita Airport, right? Yeah. And it was it was really crazy. Like I was thinking, like something is really really wrong, and you know I could already feel it in Tokyo. But then at the airport, it was was absolutely clear, and it was the time when, like uh, if, like most other countries, they didn't have any, uh, you know, people were still traveling freely, and and I was thinking, okay, the, if this is kind of like the first like, bigger pandemic uh, that we're facing, it's going to take. I was thinking two years. Oh, really? When from yeah, from the very beginning, I was thinking two years. Yeah. I don't know why, but like maybe I'm a very, very pessimistic guy or realistic. Realistic, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> realistic. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, maybe I could be pessimistic too, but in this case, no way, like two years. No, no, no. I, I was thinking that, okay. I mean, when, even when we were in the US, we had like, a, um, cause we were, we, I think we had like, 10 days left on the tour or something so we had like uh, we were having we had a day off and we had a um, we we had the dinner at this uh, elvis presley hotel in tennessee mm -hmm. and donald trump was on the cnn news so we heard uh live him saying that okay um he was closing incoming flights and stuff so so we, we nobody knew until that very second so we we and we were free that night we no gigs that night so 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 we had a meeting at some at in the lobby and more or less had like uh, who who votes who votes for continue who votes who votes to stop you know so it was that kind of thing you know but it was obvious that everyone felt that uh, <coughs> we had to stop because the problem was also that the last the last gig also closed uh, at the same day the, like even even though it was almost two two weeks ahead that last venue decided to close the same day as trump did this announcement so even if we would consider this to mm -hmm. be not a big problem the last show we couldn't even do you know so mm -hmm. we 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 decided okay we we should stop so everyone went to the parking lot and unloaded the two big buses on on the parking lot 
doing groups on like uh, Europe, uh, this goes to Europe, this goes to England, this goes to, uh, you know, and uh, and Paul went up to the hotel room starting to book flights, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, yeah, it was so crazy. And um, I don't know, it's, uh, but now, I, I mean, it's like, I mean, for, after a couple of months, I guess that you 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 hope for certain things, and then after a few more month months, you you change the way you think, and uh, after a year, you you. I mean, it's. Um, I th I think now everyone just wants to come out of this alive, you know, rather mm -hmm. than oh, I miss gigs, you know. Of course, I miss gigs, but truth is i mean i live in sweden maybe i'm lucky in this case living in sweden because i think the pandemic has has been bad here i think people are ignorant people are stupid too many people are stupid here not everyone but uh, like every day when i if i have every time because i i wouldn't say every day because i don't go into town every day at all but those days when i have to shop food like Every day, every time I, I get irritated on people getting too close and too few wear masks and everything is like, like that. So in that mm -hmm. sense, I'm not, the Swedes are not treating this uh, good, I think. But mm -hmm. um, but as a musician and, and uh, for somebody that works with culture and arts, I think it's, Sweden is fantastic. I think Norway is maybe the only country in, in Scandinavia or Europe that's maybe even better than Sweden, but Sweden is fantastic. I, I like, I think twice I got help and my wife to get help from the Council of Arts. Um, it's not that it's easy to get help because you need to show them, okay, w w how many gigs were you supposed to have this period? How mm -hmm. many, how many was, um, 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 how many gigs did you lose? And um, so you have to be very exact. You send in the papers, okay, those gigs went away. And I can't remember if I had to write like the, the number in terms of money, but, uh, mm -hmm. and I think I had to send also maybe some photos of posters and stuff like that. So it, it wasn't like a, a simple, like uh, nobody cares or something. It was, you know, you, you should, you have to do the right thing. So I had my gigs. I, I knew exactly what was canceled. So I sent that in and a couple of months later I got money. So, uh, and that happened twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is also this other thing, which is not like the council of ours. It's another kind of state thing um, where you should show like, you compare like from March to June, 2020 compared to the year before. Mm -hmm. So let's say, let's say you, 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 you earn $10,000 this period and the, um, and the next year, 2020, you, you earn zero. Okay. So you made $10,000 more than more the year 2019 than 2020. Then you, you should, if you can show that, uh, this union pays you 75% of the difference. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so we, had, we had something like that as, as yeah. well. In Germany. So it's been fantastic. I mean, I, 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 I never had this much recording recordings coming to me as now because I think some people send me recordings because they can't do anything else than sitting, sitting in, at home and trying to be creative. So I, I, I have this year, like one year back in time, I had tons of recordings and some help from 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 the states. So in that sense, it's it's okay. It's been a good, it's been a good year, even. Good year. You know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for, for me, it's been a good year because I started like like I said, I couldn't, I I didn't believe it was gonna, yeah. you know, it was gonna come back the the way the life that we knew. So I started. The, the moment that I arrived back in Germany, I started, um, you know, like um, a crowdfunding campaign. I did that because I, at that point, I had already lost the money for, for the first four months of the year, right? 
And so, um, and then I started um, teaching and I started asking people also, like you say, to play sessions, you know, and also to do some mastering, some mixing, stuff like that. And that worked well for a while. But I have to say that like these last four months, so 2021 has been like, you know, it's been like going down uh, constantly and right. in not 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 in a not in a uh you know it's not i'm not scared not to um, being able to feed my family it's not like that because i have saved money over the last 10 years right uh, so but basically um i even though i have kind of like looked for an alternative um job let's say right even though it's still in music but um i i can't even see that continuing which is which is kind of like really uh, a little bit scary but i hope i hope that it's like the you know the end of winter you know spring is beginning and people will get better mood and you know are more interested in, in education again but but we'll see i mean the thing is like i'm i don't know i'm not complaining i have like 24 7 with my daughter you know for yeah. one and a half years almost <laughs> how, how is how is she feeling She's feeling very, very good. Today was kind of like the first day where she was like really, a, you could say, a little bit aggressive. Uh, <laughs> the very, very first day where she was like, ah, oh, and and it was raining today, you know, okay. so she couldn't, we, she, we couldn't really go out much. And it was, uh, I think she was just maybe uh, she need needs to play with other kids and stuff, you know. Yeah. And, and you know, like the 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 daycares have been closed since December. Oh, that's. And so that that is also like quite quite difficult for us because you know jessica and i we both have to work yeah like uh, jessica has six well, hours I... per day and i you know i you know so i take uma till three in the afternoon three or four in the afternoon yeah. and then i try to do some work you know it's, it's been it's been tough i can imagine because we i mean our son he's uh, he's going to be 18 in like two months you know but mm. he's also doing um, uh, school from home so which changes the, the routines for us as well you know because when we work from home me and my wife we you know we go in and take him a sandwich or something then we continue to work but he has a computer in his room and he's working with, with the school and then he comes down like i'm hungry i need to eat in tw next class in 20 minutes so so we have become <laughs> like a we have become a school kitchen as well, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. so, but mm -hmm. for, for you, it must be very different have, having a, a baby. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's great. Like, you know, I, it's, it's perfect timing for having time with my daughter, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, I, yeah, that I can really yeah. imagine so, that. So I don't know, I, you know, we moved into a new place uh, in August which uh, like a really nice apartment. And so I'm, I'm really happy about that as well. It's super expensive, right? like oh, super really? expensive, yes. Um, but somehow we feel that it's something that we do want to uh, afford because it's also for the baby, because she has a great time. Like we have like, uh, like heating in the floor and stuff like, so yeah. even in the winter, she was never cold. She can be naked if she wants to be. And, play on the ground and yeah. and you know so that's kind of like um uh, because obviously like i mean i'm not spending much money other than buying food right and the rent that's yeah. Yeah. and I, i'm you know as you may know i'm a minimalist anyway like when it comes yeah. to um so <laughs> but most most of us musicians are minimalists in a way when it comes to the living conditions right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I yeah, so. I, I saw that you also like finally you you have a project with your wife a musical yeah, project. yeah it, it's it's so nice especially this time and and i can also tell you my wife i mean everyone it's it, needless to say but it's horrible what's happening um, i mean people getting sick and even dying and the people that works at the hospitals like mm -hmm. crazy crazy that that is horrible i mean needless to say but she also tells me that this is she never wants to go back to the normal life almost like because because i mean she wants the world to come back of course but mm -hmm. she, i don't know this year because of that we managed to pa pay the rent 
of course, which is a must, but but then mm -hmm. we, we manage to do recordings and stuff, and then we can take time to, as you say, to, to be with your daughter. We can, for the first time, really spend time doing something because this came from, I think, because um, all November and December we, we recorded, me and Tina recorded for Devin, you know, because Tina did a lot of choir re arrangements and stuff for, for both Puzzle and, and Snuggles. And, and I mean, I worked with my, with Tina, my wife, since day one in various shapes and forms, not like as a duo, but I played rounds for her on that project. I mix for her. She do something for me. So we did music together. I mean, that, that's always, but, um, mm -hmm. but this is the first time that I, uh, and that came after recording for Devin. I, I, I told her as shit, we did cause. Devin got so excited, you know, because as you know, Devin can sometimes he just sends stuff that's just a tiny little thing, and he goes, just do something. And Tina, Tina told me she hadn't had this fun in years, uh, getting the freedom to do something. So she spent a couple of days and she sent that to Devin. And as you know, when Devin gets excited, he he really shows you that he likes it. So he, mm -hmm. he, Devin was just love bombing her to, through text messages and stuff like that. So, so Tina got really, really um, inspired and, and excited and f f from that. So, so, we, so, so we worked, she, we recorded, I mean, we have this, I have a one a little studio and she has one on the other side of the, the garden. So we, we, uh, we sent files between each other and then we sent to them in. And um, so after that, I said, we, it's time. We, we should do something now and we should decide that nobody else get involved. We, we do everything. N n no, like, mm -hmm. yeah, we just decide we, we have to do everything. So I, we are playing cello, we're playing violin, we're playing everything. Uh, but we we have to use the tools in the computer, of course, because because um, uh, we can't play cello and, and violin. But uh, I found an incredible tone in in that old crappy violin. You know, I, I played a couple of notes and then I pitched it a little bit and then I did some glissando and I said, "Shit, this sounds like fucking El Shankar suddenly." <laughs> uh, it was so nice, and I had I have a nice auto tuner in in as a plugin. And suddenly it sounded like this sounds really good, you know. Even if I recorded one note at the time, it doesn't matter. It's still us, you know. And um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 nice, and it's a blessing. Have, you know, I I realize that even more now when we do this, because I I think there's not many have have that opportunity to to do music, because she's super talented, and we are. She comes from a different background than me maybe a little bit but she she has perfect pitch she has uh, the choir background she writes scores and stuff and i come from my more like wild i don't know but together yeah. we you know with it something new new happened you know and it's mm -hmm. it's yeah it's great and i came up with the perfect um, name i think because i told her I, I was going to write something about when we did the first video which which she did by herself, by the way, she edited the whole first, because we, we only have two tracks released so far. And the mm -hmm. first one is like a cartoon animated thing. So she did that all by herself in Final Cut, starting from zero. She didn't know the program at all, but uh, I was writing something, okay, like as if I were doing a post, like, okay, this is just me and my wife. And then it's, hmm, that's a good name, just me and my wife. So we decided to call it that. <laughs> well yeah it's nice you know so we we do a little bit like one or two days three days a week we do that and then i go back to the recordings and then we yeah you know it's it's interesting that uh when i mean to me i knew that you guys were recording lots of stuff for Devin, obviously and then when i saw the first video uh, i think or i heard the first tune I was thinking, okay, that this must be because of the work on Devon's album, because oh, yeah, yeah, really. also like the, the 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 instruments, right, and uh, the vibe, really. Yeah, I think it's it's related. It's it's very much related. 
yeah for for me it was more like uh, not not necessarily like um I mean the relation to the recordings with Devin is that Devin says I love vocals do vocals 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 and that's what she can do she can she's really good in arranging vocals and doing harmonies and colors and stuff so that we will do again of course but musically speaking it's i don't know what it's this is but uh, it's nice it's it's nice to be able to work together also mm -hmm. you know like, like mm -hmm. this especially now mm -hmm. yeah yeah incredible like this is something you would probably never have have gotten to do no, without exactly. the pandemic yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, you know something like something like that is is really missing for me at the moment you know it's it's been like creatively not so not challenging at all and not many people who really want to work with me which was kind of a little bit frustrating but uh, you but know that, there's that, that, yeah. that can't be like that that can't be the the truth because even if even if even if nothing is happening, that doesn't mean that people people doesn't want to work with you. It's it's for other reasons that I mean sh shit happens. I think that for for many many different reasons together, you end up in a in a situation, and it's not because people doesn't want to work with you. But um, yeah, yeah, no, I no, I mean, uh, well, let's say people don't communicate that then. Yeah, yeah. Which which is which I understand, but. Uh, I, you know, I still like, even though I have not really, well, there's one, one album I did with, well, I, you know, I keep putting out music anyway, but it yeah. doesn't really, it doesn't feel real. First of all, everything is at a distance. So I did one with, with Ian Body. I did three albums already with Mark Wingfield, which we recorded on, on Zoom actually, which is incredible. I improvised together on Zoom and, you know, released those albums and they are amazing. I, I think they are absolutely amazing. Right? Wow. And like where you would say it's impossible to do that. But if you know, if you know how somebody thinks and plays, right, and you're not absolutely, uh, uh, you don't really have to sync up rhythmically, yeah. precisely, then you can do it over Zoom. It's cool. And I was actually, I was actually going to ask you if you would be interested in doing an experiment uh, at some point to do like a live recording via Zoom with, with four or five people. Yeah, of course, but then we should we should use the the um, you know what audio movers. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what we were using. Okay, that's what we're using. But the zoom the zoom we use just for the communication part, and ah, we okay. have audio movers for the recording. Yes. Okay. Okay. I see. I yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's it's cool, and I did I I did also a recording with a, a flute player from the Houston Symphony Orchestra also over the over the internet so i was playing electronics with her and uh it's it's pretty amazing that it's you know if you don't if you if you really kind of like take into account the delay right yeah. and you just don't care about it you know it's just wonderful <laughs> but did, did you have a latency delay kind of thing going no we well we you know the thing is that if the latency only goes in one direction it's easy to understand what's happening but if the latency go if you're sending signals in both directions so yeah. so i get her flute signals sent to me i i do treatments right and the treatments themselves have latency right and then that gets sent back to her to play to right and it's it's kind of like it's sort of i can't even explain how it works but it's kind of crazy because you it's almost as if there's like this feedback loop happening and and you don't really i mean it would be interesting to try to do it with with drums because <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? I, I i didn't try it yet because um uh we, we just did like a sound check with the uh did you know benoit pecan from from Switzerland? yeah of course of course i know him i was supposed i was supposed to be at his school in august september last year i think and then of course that got cancelled so we did everything through zoom and then we were supposed to uh, we, we installed uh, audio movers and i was opening up my pro tools and i pushed play and he he got everything on his aux return so it was like amazing but we never came to that situation where we were playing yeah we, he, he yeah. was just listening to my to my yeah yeah sound 
Yeah. No, I discovered the audio movers thing. I, I think maybe even five years ago, because oh, yeah, really? because you know, like sometimes I have to make a, a remote uh, listening session in a studio or something, and and it it worked well back then, and it still works well. And I think they have been bought up by some big company, right? I heard mm. that, and so they are also like adding things to the service and stuff like that. But yeah. It's, it's interesting. So it is possible to make music. And um, um, I actually also, I even, um, I organized uh, an improv session in a studio in Dresden. And we were four guys. That was like four weeks ago or so. And like everything was legal and a big studio and lots of space. And uh, we did two days of improvisations together. And that was that was good. But it's something like, like it's always like my initiative, right? So I have to kind of like, but I'm I'm not complaining about that, but just explaining, you know, it's the way that uh, that it goes. And actually, um, you know, this kind of like maybe is a little bit like what you do with uh, your wifey. Um, I really want to I really want to um, go into a, a studio on my own in the summer, like a proper big studio with in lots of instruments, and I want to record an album all on my own. Like I want to play everything myself. I, I, uh... And, and I want to actually compose it in the studio. So I want, just want to sit down at the piano and play something and then orchestrate that. And so I want to build the whole thing up just, and this, this is sort of my dream for the summer. I hope I, yeah, I, cool. I get to do that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, do it, yeah. do it. Yes, yes. So uh, Devin's, Devin's album, uh, The Puzzle is absolutely insane. It's, yeah. it's crazy, crazy. I mean, I also sent him like maybe 20 tracks of stuff and and the album is like th so thick right it's <laughs> some things are just it's impossible to hear um all the details un yeah, unless yeah. you know unless you know that they are there i, know, I mean I and that was that was already the case with empath right like with empath <laughs> it's also insane yeah, but yeah. this is like even even uh crazier right i think he, i don't remember how many but there was like hundreds of channels yeah. at the same time you know yeah and mm -hmm. and it was quite obvious when he texted me about the last process of, of the mixing and stuff that it's uh, he, he got he was a bit um in, in pain about like uh, his mind like how should i get everything to be able to because he wants everyone to be heard of course you know <laughs> yeah, but that's that's impossible with uh, yeah, yeah, I, I four, know, I forty know. people involved. It's more like yeah. it's more like an orchestra, right? Yeah. It's a very very orchestral, crazy yeah. sound. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. It's it's a real pleasure to be involved with that with that. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. It was it was so nice because for us it came perfect in November December because he he just sent stuff, you know. And I think I recorded also a bunch of stuff that. Because as you also know, he's very like fast. His mind is very like everywhere, and he grabs stuff and he picks up stuff. And sometimes it goes away. If it doesn't happen within an hour, it goes away. And sometimes it's so it's very like um, direct with things, you know. So he sent me also <clears throat> like tracks, Spotify links. So he he told me because. Uh, he, he will if let's say he would um, like a, a groove on a random track on Spotify he sent me can, can you play your version of this groove and I was looking for the BPM like close to, to the same BPM and then I listened for 10 seconds and I I, I <coughs> turn off Spotify and then I played my own version mm -hmm. did some fails I played the same groove with the ride the same with the height and the, and then I sent to him and then something completely different came out from that not at all close to the spotify song but mm -hmm. <clears throat> i think that's what he needs when he when he creates he, he needs he i guess he's super tired of midi drum loops and stuff like that so he, he gets a, a, a decent sound sound sounded drum kit and and a, a human playing and and gets impulses and just so then stuff happens on on the second you know yeah like, yeah yeah some some of those i know ended up there but some other stuff 
took some other place for you know it will show up later i guess maybe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> wonderful wonderful hey morgan so like one of the um really amazing things about you is um is your your story like your your background and your story and you meeting Mats and uh th this is like you you told me that story when we were on the road so um <clears throat> And then the, the 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 Frank Zappa Association and and you playing with Frank and all these things it's it's absolutely amazing because to me you are obviously like you're an ageless person right in a way you know what I mean like you know you could you could be 20 years old you know <laughs> you would you would be the same person somehow because I think I don't I don't want to say that you were always you were always sort of like uh, mature right but but musically you have this 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 uh, you have the skill level somehow acquired over the years right but you have the playfulness that uh that is just fascinating right and wow. and i i mean i know the answer but i'm going to ask anyway is that something that you had to consciously kind of like preserve sometimes or is that something that was always natural for you to stay that way uh, I, you know, I, I, I just know that the way I learned to play drums was <clears throat> not by theory books and not by, I mean, I had nice teachers, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, everything I, I, everything that came into my brain and may, or I should say my heart, a little bit my, mm -hmm. my brain, but mm -hmm. my soul, my heart came from uh, everything else than, than facts, no facts, just I put on this album. It's like, oh, shit. It's like, I, I fucking die when I hear this album. You know, age ten. You know, mm -hmm. I hear, uh, I hear. You know, like, um, like when I was ten years old, old I heard Bud Rich play. I, I don't know if I told you this before, but I heard Bud Rich. Uh, Frank Sinatra was having like a concert on Swedish television. I was 10 and at the end of the concert, Frank Sinatra says, uh, give a big hand for my old friend, Buddy Rich. And this old guy comes in. I'm not sure if I even knew at all who that guy was. Maybe I knew the name. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Maybe I didn't know because I know, oh, it's fucking Buddy Rich coming to play with Frank Sinatra. And then he plays this West Side Story thing. And of course there is this big drum solo. And it's like this, you know, nobody told me how to do that and even if somebody would it's it's i get too restless i i just have to let me try you know i mean i'm i i'm 10 i but i i hear i hear everything in my head he plays this solo and i just want to run to the drums because my I, my vision is that I, or my um I, I expect it to be possible to play more or less because it's here it's super clear yes. in my head you know i mean it's must it must be possible to play you know I, I don't need any information i just heard that's enough you know and i run to drum set and it's like uh, getting cramps or whatever and it's like but but i still hear it uh, so i was keeping i i imitated him for easily five years non-stop mm -hmm. i bought some albums i played along with them <clears throat> so and, and then later i found all those other albums you know because because but rich it was mainly i i mean i liked the big band music and 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 so but um the drumming was the, the my, my um, energy where i get the energy not necessarily the music because some some albums that i bought with him i, I moved the pickup you know and 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 the music was like hmm. But if and if there wasn't a drum solo, I, I put the album away, you know. But later on, I found all those other albums which had nice musicianship, nice music. I mean, nice compositions, but also nice playing. So everything I know, I would say, comes from those albums, you know. And then, I mean, after after by the rich, I, I'm I'm talking about bands like. Uh, King Crimson, Frank Zappa, Captain Beefheart, Magma, Universe Zero, Archsoid, uh, 
Holsworth, Miles, everything, you know. And uh, so I think that for me, I I had no questions because everything was on those albums. So I think I learned to play in a um, free-minded way because I, yes. I just listened. So, so my main key was lis listening, inspiration, and... Uh, just like that you know and maybe that was how because if if i would be like a classical pianist and i went go to school age 10 and i had this super straw uh, like uh, angry teacher saying this this you can't do that maybe then i would my mind would go away you know because uh, so I, I was i was free and my parents didn't say you can't do this or that so i, I guess i grew up in, in free world and i found this music early so that 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 form formed formed me i think yeah in incredible i think really the uh, exposure to great music at a young age or let's say not at a young age but a, at the at the right age right yeah. where yeah. where you have the interest to do or where you have uh, where your soul and your heart as you say is open yeah. to get inspired you know like if if you really if that is and for you it seems to have been like the perfect match good timing right <laughs> good timing of do, in, in uh, discovering that music um and being like a a sponge soaking everything up yeah. and then after that after that like say technique or whatever it's just a matter of sitting down and trying yeah right? and and that and that part i didn't even think about that came to me without even knowing it because when i was imitating i was only going for that you know because in Badrich's case i mean obviously he had that amazing technique but there is a lot of people i mean just take a look at, at on youtube there is like everyone is faster than the other and everyone is younger than the other but i i don't care about that but in, in but in Badrich's case he had the 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 touch the, the, that gentle light it was like an elegance to it and it was it, so he was like a mix between elegance and macho because he was macho but he has this elegance on youtube everyone is only macho i mean there is no elegance there is no sound as mm -hmm. compared to i mean i i can't say that e nothing is like what i'm telling about now on youtube but but the majority of the stuff on youtube is very one minded i think yeah yeah <laughs> so 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 i think that when, when i heard body play because um that tone that light touch and that you know sometimes i i, I it reminds me also about this famous quote of uh, muhammad ali you know like uh, dance like a, like a butterfly and sting like a bee you know that mm -hmm. being able to have that that light you know and then <clears throat> like that from from yeah, nowhere exactly you know? mm -hmm. It's not because maybe on YouTube you get the the sting, uh, the the angry bee, all like from the beginning to end. You get only like only that, you know. But uh, the the dynamics and stuff was uh, imitating him gave me the basic um, playing ability. And a couple of years later, I I had my first drum teacher, and he told me can you do a paradiddle? And I said, I, I don't know. I don't know what that, what that is. And then, you know, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, and to ta to to ta to ta But then I heard, but wait, that's sort of what, what Buddy is doing. And that's what Billy mm -hmm. Cobham is doing when he's, when he's playing, you know, to ta -ta 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 -ta. that's sort of, that must, that, that must be paradiddles. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, you know, so, so I had some, some good teachers as well, you know, yeah, well, that's that's amazing. Hey, what what you just said about the drummer kind of with the the softness and the explosion, right? Yeah. Like um, the the very first time that I really became aware of that aspect was actually pretty late. It was like maybe ninety four or so um, when um, I heard more of Terry Bozio's playing. Yeah. And what what was really like the most fascinating aspect of his playing was the the dynamic range of the of the accents like which was unbelievable to me like how does he do that like he goes from yeah. that and like and this 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 explosion of energy uh is still to me like the most fascinating thing about drummers also simon phillips right like yeah that yeah. kind of yeah 
yeah yeah but all those early albums i mean <clears throat> every time some of those people play like at fashion local club i i i feel like for for the rest of my life i will be um um i owe i owe them something like i'm i'm so grateful because i found those albums and i i even told me i know maybe i told you this too but <clears throat> like a couple of times i told hermeto pasqual uh should i give you some money because maybe your music made me feel so great so i didn't need to go to the shrink maybe i don't know maybe if i haven't heard your music maybe i would feel better uh, um, if i didn't hear your music maybe i wouldn't feel as good and if that would be the case maybe i would need a shrink and that costs money and stuff how much do you want i told you <laughs> and and he was just laughing but i said but it's serious i mean some of the stuff on your albums you know it could be maybe only that part and that part and that song the majority of that album or whatever but there is those parts here and there that hit so hard you know like the melody it, it just takes you out from this world and it shows you something beyond what we have here some kind of uh i don't know i don't i, I don't have the words but it's it's uh it's it's magic it really it, it it's not like oh i like music what, what's your favorite group this is much more than that it it's actually change change people's lives i think it's beautiful it's beautiful what you're saying and you know in in a way i think that is the way that the music business okay even if it's not the music business anymore then but this is where things should go that that the people who really have that experience of you're changing my life with your music or you are doing me good or like that that those people get a chance like you were saying to pay for it right yeah. like whatever that means because the the what what the music industry has done it sort of like prepackaged the music and said okay an album is like 20 euros or right something like that and 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 i think nowadays it should be much more about that emotional that currency of emotion where it's about the relationship between you the music and the artist somehow and uh yeah it's it's, it's beautiful that you uh that you mentioned that because i feel that as well as well yeah that yeah, you know I'm all sure. the all the musicians who are great to me i would i would love to and i do um keep supporting them when i can yeah yeah and uh, sometimes you you have a feeling that it's very hard to make them understand that what you're feeling what you're saying really is that sincere you know because yeah. it could still be like um i mean it's not like a be being a, what do you say like an it's not a, to idolize some someone like uh, like uh, f fans in that sense that you collect or whatever but when, when those groups change something it, it's uh, it's it's hard to make it's hard to get them to understand it sometimes maybe but uh, I, I remember because i think i told this to her method twice and last time was only like a year ago i think maybe even less and then <clears throat> um i can't remember exactly how he uh, processed what i was saying but i think that he still he he's, he understood what i was saying because he because he went into the subject of health because of, that's what i was talking about and then he said like uh, yeah you know music keeps me in, in in shape too you know every one of my doctors they get sick before me he said because <laughs> he's 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 getting old you know and mm, yeah. uh, so obviously every one of his doctors usually get sick before him and he just keeps going you know <laughs> and yeah and the same goes for i mean uh, <clears throat> it's 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 been um, I mean, as you used to write sometimes uh, the hashtag living living your dream that is also 
I, I put a lot of value in that because uh, as we both sometimes struggle with living the life of a musician with income and all the chaos mm -hmm. that comes with it, living the dream is something um, nobody can even buy for money, you know, because uh, I have some friends only, I mean, even today I talked with a friend of mine, he, he's actually mainly a friend of my wife, but he's helping us to, to arrange uh, some projects later this year and he's looking for funding and stuff. And so his friend, my, my, my wife's friend's friend, he makes like um, uh, $4 billion a year. Wow. Billion, yeah. you know, yeah. and maybe he would change almost everything. All that money he would maybe exchange in the return uh, if he would get the ability to express himself through an instrument. I don't know. I don't even know this guy. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just talking general speaking now, like, uh, I because I know uh, from um, my son's school, like when I grew up, I, I can just tell when that guy working at the bank or that guy, people who has money doesn't, um, they, they uh, would trade a lot of money for the ability to play an instrument, I think. That's, yeah, that's, I, I hear you. so that's, uh, I didn't do anything to to um earn the ability to play an instrument it, it just ha it's it just happened and I, but i know i'm grateful for it you know I'm, I'm super happy and then meeting people and even playing with uh, idols that you have like uh, sources of inspiration you meet them and you play with a bunch of those guys it's for me living on the wrong side on the wrong place on the world, getting to play with Frank Zappa is, is zero per, per, percent likely to happen. And, and then it happened. And then it happened with, with Magma. I, I talk with Christian Fander on, on the telephone. We have contact. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, mm -hmm. and it's, for me, it's worth more than any, any money. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. But, but you see, and this is this is something that I, I know we have, like what you were the story you were telling about Hameto, right? Like, it's the same for us, same for us, because we believe, okay, that because Christian Wanda had such a big influence on you, that somehow, there is a little bit of Id idolization there. But really, you are as much an idol as he is. Right, but in, it's a different generation. It's a different scene. It's a different time, right? But but we need to kind of like I think this is I mean it's stupid, but I say it anyway. Like we need to accept that you know maybe we've also been in situations where we've had a very big influence yeah. on people, and you know the power of music. I would I would say it's always the power of music. It's not the power of me. It's not the power of you. It's not the power of Christian Vanda. It's it's the music that speaks through the musician somehow and then because we as human beings we are so focused on other human beings like we sort of project we project the love let's say onto the other person and i think that's great i think it's yeah. it's kind of great <laughs> yeah, it's it's um yeah it's it's um it's it's great yeah i'm i'm um you know, maybe it's even like the 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 fact that you're you're capable of loving so so much because I, you know you're a very loving person, right? And and so maybe that is the reason why you you have like this resonance in this world, you know, with other people and also with music. I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure that um, all of these people that I mentioned they can feel my sincere love for them as composer and just um, some something they know that they changed a lot for me you know and in christian van der, van der's case it was kind of funny because the first couple of times we met he, he was kind of he was almost living in the 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 
mythic life as he, as he appears to have like you can't really meet him you can't speak with him and whatever you know mm -hmm. whatever you would think about him but um little by little you know i i can't remember in which order but suddenly he just started to speak english with me because before that no english and and i was saying you speak english and then he said yeah but now i know you he said <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and now we have the most funny telephone conversations because I speak zero France, like French, mm -hmm. zero, mm -hmm. and his English is not perfect. So sometimes it's like, and there is always like uh, the connection is not always that good. So I'm, I'm, can, I'm, I'm talking with Christian. It's like, I, I don't want to hang up for the next hour. It's not like, and then he, and then he, he you know, every, most Frenchmen they they say say the, this thing, um, come on, dee, come on, dee. and then he, he talks with his girlfriend. He he tries to say something in English and he just doesn't find the word the words and and in French, come on, dee means what does it call? How do you say? What How do you say? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, come on, come on, dee, blah, 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 blah. come on, dee, blah, blah, blah. and then we we try some more and then you know we we navigate forward you know and it's it's funny yeah <laughs> <laughs> wonderful and yeah, you know with uh, with frank zappos music for example and also with magma um this this i mean i don't like this word like but the the legacy or just the music right the music the body of work um somehow um i find it interesting how that will kind of project into the future and then when I say future, I don't mean like next year, you know, I mean like in 50 years or yeah. in, you know, and like you, you having um, met Frank a few years before he died, right? How, how do you feel about um, what, what, what has his music sort of like, what's the life of his music after his life? Do you have an opinion on that? I think it was very badly treated because uh, everyone knows he has this crazy big vault of music and one million hours 10 million hours of music recorded and when he passed away i, I just know that there, there was a lot of um i don't know i was just hoping that okay why why, why is not music being released and, and so but it was a lot of uh, trouble between raiko disc and um yeah just problems i think and um, I, I, it's it's complicated subject but i think that uh, i was hoping much more to happen anyway you know because i know that there is so much recorded you know because he recorded every show and every sound check for forever you know so mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. i think now it's <clears throat> now it's it has become a bit better but for the first couple of years I, I, as as i recall it it wasn't much um, it could have been more exciting i think Mm -hmm. and and if you just if we just like maybe not talk about the recordings that weren't yeah, released yeah, okay. after his death but just the his body of work that is available publicly yeah what what do you think i think that when somebody like him passes away at least i was thinking something must happen now something like like uh, I mean, John Lennon was murdered, and usually when people get murdered or be, take suicide, commit suicide, they they then stuff happens. You know, if people just die, it's for some reason it doesn't have the same effect. But uh, I was mm -hmm. still think, thinking that uh, when when it's Frank Zappa, he, he's like, but but i didn't see much happening really i we me and Mats, we got a couple of calls from uh, europe people who wanted to set up uh, his music orchestras mainly and i think that there was also a lot of problems for the, every orchestra that had the 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 will and the love to put up his music went into some problems also because the the music scores are, 
as far as I know, were like crazy expensive to to hire. And uh, this is stories that I heard from conductors and orchestra workers. Like uh, it was complicated. You get the scores very late. They are very expensive, and you just just problems. You know, uh, mm -hmm. that that's at least what happened with a few orchestras that I work with. So my feeling was that somebody you know maybe not only one guy but whoever is responsible responsible i don't know still somebody is making this complicated to 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 mm -hmm. do you know so mm -hmm. it, it was hard, hard and um so i think as some people really tried but uh, it was it was hard so but um yeah, I think there was a couple of documentaries and uh, articles in ma good magazines and stuff like that. But um, and a couple of projects was happening for sure. But uh, so yeah, I I I I would say that I expected a little bit more to happen, like worldwide, uh, mm -hmm. to recognize him mm -hmm. when he passed away. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, uh, I'm not sure if I told you this, but I, at, you know, when he died, I really didn't know much about his work. You know, not much. I knew some, I had some sort of sense for it. And when he died, I was, I had really, I would, it, it hit me very, very hard. It hit me super hard. It was almost like, like there's like, there's like a musical God is yeah. gone you know and 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 i have goosebumps now when i say this yeah, because it yeah. was really even even it was it was so funny because as it as as if his music was already kind of like part of the collective conscience right? it was not something that i actually had to had heard everything yeah, yeah. right yeah. so but 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 the fact that he was gone it yeah. was really it was hurting me a lot and uh yeah, I can, I can understand exactly what you say now, because uh, you don't need to know every song that he did, because you still know, you still know the mind, you still know the power of his, everything that he was, and the force and every you know, the, the whole thing, you know, and, and, when, and um, when you hear about it, it's something, you know, e even like, uh, <clears throat> I, I I did listen a little bit to Rush when I grew up because now I I I, I, I recall the same reaction when Neil Peart died mm -hmm. because I think Rush was a great band I I, I had a like a, I had moving pictures and maybe one more album that I actually in, liked uh, uh, Neil Peart was the perfect drummer for that band no, no for sure although I was never a, a, a fan at all of him but. Of course, you loved Neil Peart. He was a, a member of this band, and they played. They they did great compositions, you know. And uh, <clears throat> so when he died, it was also like shit, like Neil Peart, because you know mm -hmm. that he he meant also so much for so many people, you know. And uh, yeah. it doesn't matter if I was a hardcore fan or not. It's just like you you just want him to be alive, you know, because. Uh, you, we need uh, Neil Peart, I guess you can say, you know, and 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 especially then with Frank, you know, because you know, I, I think I, I saw one time at like a promotional copy of some album that he released. Uh, the, the promo copy had some information on the backside, and there was a quote from Steve I that said. Uh, there hasn't, uh, there isn't, there hasn't, and there will never be like one, like Frank Zappa, like uh, in the past, now, or in the future. Mm -hmm. And that was like a short quote that really frames him, you know, because, yeah, I mean, how, how... so when, when a guy like that passes away, also, uh, also because you listen to him, then, then yeah, it was, I, I can, I know, and I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, and, and basically, like the whole, a whole group of musicians that work with him sort of, um, 
I, you know, I, I, I don't think, uh, I don't want to use the word family because that's not what I mean. You know, like there's, there's something about just the having, having uh, breathed uh, the air, you know, with Frank, let's say. Okay. That, that sort of, and, and to, to me, it's, it's incredible with you because like, you know, it, <laughs> you look to me like you may, you must have been like six years old. When you <laughs> <fall away. laughs> yeah, I was not very much older, but I, I was 20. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's, it's a long time ago. So I, I was quite young and, and Matt was 17. So yeah, we yeah. were young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there is something because, you know, in December last year, he was supposed to turn 80 and mm -hmm. I got, I mean, for me, it, it can go, I don't know, it's really hard to say, but maybe three or four month, months can pass without listening to any of his music. And suddenly I just have to bring a specific album. I just have to listen to that. So, so I come back to it, you know, but now when, when he was supposed to go turn 80 last December, I got really like, I got super emotional and I felt like 80 and I felt many things, you know, and, and <clears throat> there is this incredible, super beautiful song called Watermelon in Easter Hay, uh, which is slow, like super slow, not the typical Frank's like if, if you ask people what do you think about Frank's music it's it's crazy and it's like a million things happening but what mm -hmm. melon what melon is day is slow super gentle super beautiful melody it's just this thing that goes like um like a a, 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 a theme that the guitar plays and goes round and round and then there's a melody and that, that's all you know and so i i felt i, I need to I must do something because because of his birth birthday. So I I asked my brother to record um, the, the guitar line, and then we played the, the, the that beautiful melody was played on uh, Tina's chromatic harmonica. And then instead of playing the guitar melody as Frank did, uh, my brother played uh, as a slide. So the chromatic uh, harmonica and the slide really sounded fantastic you know so i was super happy with this and we spent a couple of days record this and mix and we did was very like and we then we did a video and i wrote a long post about it and um so yeah there is you know again um you, you something happens you know when you think about about him and that he would have turned 80 you know so Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets emotional for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Morgan, what what I'm really interested in now is sort of like these um, after after the Frank chapter, let's say. Can you kind of like maybe sketch out the next chapters a little bit, like especially like the '90s, and then you know. Like, what did you do then? I mean, what was the main focus and which were the main projects that sort of uh, yeah, were important? I, 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 met, I met Mats in 81. So we have, we, we play, we played since 81, like every, all the time, you know, but then when Frank passed away, the, the, a couple of years before Frank passed away, I started to play with the, uh, super cool band in, in Sweden called Flesh Quartet, which was uh, a string electrified string quartet uh, plus a vocalist. And in those days, that band, you know, they had like a, a, a period around 87, 88, where they did stuff that I would rate as one of the coolest bands in the world, you know, like crazy cool, you know, and this vocalist, Tom, Wade, Tom Waits, Captain B for type, <laughs> super super cool so i got to play with them and we toured and played a lot and uh, but suddenly they went like in a different direction than i than i wanted and then the stuff happened with frank and i st i wanted to do more with matt so I, I i stopped working with flesh quartet 
and I, I really wanted to focus on on uh, my own stuff with Mats, you know. So that happened Af after after Frank and after Flash Quartet. I think I stopped working with them in ninety four, maybe um, around mm -hmm. there. And then I okay, now it's we should um, focus on. I want to focus on on me and Matt stuff. And so that has been my major um, uh, focus. But then other stuff comes in between, and you do you do you do with Matt, and you do other stuff at the same time, and you change between whatever you can, you know. But um, so yeah, I you know I, I I moved to Stockholm in '86, I think, and I don't do much session work here because as I guess in every country specific people do specific things that guy mm -hmm. he doesn't you can't see him on TV but, but you can see him with bands like that and so everyone gets their areas to work around I think and so so I I, I didn't uh, I, I, ran, I, I was a member of a couple of bands, may, mainly, rather than working as a session drummer. So, and I started my own record company in 96 and released our first album, Me and Mats, in 96. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was nice. It was a lot of work and I'm not... Um, good at that type of work, but I just knew that I, I want... I mean, if if a record company would would come to us and say that we want to release your albums, uh, to, to release your music, I, I don't think I would have um, I wouldn't have formed my own label. So, mm -hmm. but it was it was cool to form my own label because yeah, it's it's cool to have your own label. But at the same time, it would be much better if somebody that that can work with that part of the business if, if if they would release and help us that i, I wouldn't you know because so i spent maybe between 96 and 2005 i released my own albums and also side projects you know we, we released my brother's albums we did the captain b for tribute we did the meshuga lead guitarist his soul album uh, I also released and uh, Danny Wally slide guitarist and so, so between what, what, my, what's what was the name of the label? What uh, is the name? The label was uh, Ultimate Audio Entertainment. That that I formed myself in '96. So mm -hmm. uh, so we released maybe 15 titles. Uh, most of them me and Matt's, but side projects as as the ones I told you. But then in 2005, uh, I, I, you know, because we get Alvin was born in 2003 and um, it was already hard to, you know, go to the post office and, and send personal envelopes with CDs. It was like crazy work, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then we played at this uh, venue in Paris in 2005, I think, or 2004, three or four. Uh, and uh, the owner of this company called Cuneiform Records, mm -hmm. Steve. uh, Steven Feigenbaum, he was in the audience uh, and uh, we met after and he just, he just told me after, if you want me to release your albums, I would be happy to. So it was like, yes, please. <laughs> I don't want to do any more paperwork. I, I, I'm, I'm not doing that good, you know. So, mm -hmm. so he was, he released our music between 2005 and 2014, maybe because then, you know, the sales are super tiny, and um, when you play live, I need albums, so I need to buy my own albums from him, and he needs to charge me, like he charged everyone. So you pay. Mm -hmm. You pay, I don't know, six, seven dollars for an album. You pay shipping. Mm -hmm. You pay customers. So you end up buying your own albums for nine dollars. Like, yes. And it's like that's crazy. So when, like, five years ago, when me and Mats had, um, like, a thirty-fifth anniversary, because this year we have forty years anniversary, but five years ago we have a thirty-five years thing coming, and I was thinking, okay, let's put together something and. 
because you can as you know you can produce an album for like two dollars one dollar even if you want mm -hmm. so i started to produce them myself again and uh, because then i can just give away for free to friends or whatever i don't have to pay yeah. hundreds of dollars every time i need cds you know so so I'm, I'm back printing myself now and um, I have a little help with like uh, there is this distribution distributor in Japan. Uh, I send a bunch to them and then um, I do band camp. I, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's very slow, but, um, yeah. but it's, it's okay. And I'm going to do it again now because of the upcoming 40 years anniversary in November. So we're going to do a four CD box, Blu-ray, blah, 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 blah. We're going to do everything again. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So 2014, that was the year that we met. At Fashing? Was it at Fashing? Yeah. First time I saw you. Uh, maybe, maybe that was, maybe that was 13 then. 2013. But 2014 was the when you when you played with Crimson Project. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah because, I'm, it, it's... because I, I knew I I knew you. We met before that. Yeah, I we... I, I didn't I didn't remember that. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, because I I, <laughs> I saw I saw a stickman at Fashing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me the like, local club. I... That must have been a couple of years before uh, the Crimson Project. Yeah, let me let me let me just. Uh, but was that really with me? That is that is the interesting question now. Because you know you know that Stickman was with uh, Michael Bernier before me. It was with a different guy for one year oh. for one year and a half. Oh, uh, but I think I uh, saw so with you. I'm, I'm yeah. Because <laughs> because when I played with you with Crimson Project. I already knew about you and yeah. I, I, I knew you sort of. So we, we met at Fashing, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like um, this, this, this musical, the, I, I'm so fascinated now. Well, especially nowadays, like how everything kind of comes together like all the different strands of, of musicians and music and influences like, and you see like everything has always been so close, right? But it, it, it felt so far apart, uh, especially in the eighties, right? Like, at, well, I was, I was too young, right? You know, I was 10 in 82, right? But, but, you know, things were sort of like, everything felt so, the world was still so big, you know, and now everything is so, so closely related and just the people that also I have the, uh, the honor to talk to with this series of conversations, you know, it's incredible. Like I spoke with Phil Gould, you know, of level 42, um, a couple of weeks oh, yeah. ago. Oh, really? Yeah. And that, that was also like a really super interesting conversation, like with, you know, like, and again, like the stories, they are, I don't want to say that the stories are always the same, but you know, you can see like like we are very much sort of like a tribe, a tribe of people somehow. Yeah. You know, and 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 that is uh yeah, I, I just I still find that so fascinating that there is that there are things in the world that are really um where there's there are no no frontiers, right? Like no yeah. borders, you know, and yeah. uh Yeah, and I mean, like, okay, like the for me playing the, the Crimson Project shows with you, like, that was wonderful. It it really was. But then the tour with with Devin, um, <laughs> you know, you know, like, you know, I was yeah. smiling at you every night, yeah. For... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it, it was so funny because uh, you you the um. Because you, it, it's nice to, you know, when you do music, sometimes it's nice to listen through uh, your friend's ears or mm -hmm. you do music and you, because for me, you, you, I, I, I know that for at some point you mentioned something 
something I did in some song or whatever that I didn't think about so much. But when you told me about, because uh, you 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 take notice of details and and you because I know you 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 told me about like uh, you are you love music you told me about uh, peca you told me you you have your own way of um hearing things and uh and uh, yeah you hear things and you you take notice of stuff and certain thing things means to you that doesn't necessarily mean anything to <laughs> the guy on the left or to the right you know because and and there was something with you Every night when we played uh, that song, I played it like I did because because you were standing there. I, I mean that 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 affected me at least. Mm -hmm. If you were if you were would not have been there, I would play a similar thing. But just because you were there and just because you told me about something and because I knew you were your ears was opening open, mm -hmm. I, I had to. I wanted to deliver as good as possible because I know that you would pick up, and I I, I love those nights when you know something because sometimes sometimes you can't always control everything. You know, it could be a sound thing, it could be a monitor thing, it could be thousands of factors that mm -hmm. makes you not reach the G spot, if I say so. <laughs> You know, you 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 strive for it. You 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 try, you try, and you almost hit the G spot, but it's not like exactly. But then suddenly, you hit it, and 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 I I got this. Um... <laughs> From you, and uh, I love that because uh, I was uh, aiming aiming for that like uh, every mm -hmm. every night, and uh, yeah, I I think. Uh, but so um yeah so there was a lot of minds on stage but uh, yeah the, the Devin stuff was um uh, but yeah what i was going to say was that except for everyone involved was super nice on stage off stage and was just a f super fantastic group of people uh i think everyone contributed in their own special way you know and i think that was what formed this this group of people in this great way i think all the minds together was like this is really cool yeah 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 you know like um so to go come back to this way that you were playing there this particular kind of groove and articulation on the hi-hat and the different sounds you were doing on the hi-hat um, you know, it's that kind of um, detail in music, which is which is so incredibly um, special, right? That is what's special because, like, yeah, you can you can write down a groove as a notation, right? And like, we could write down that groove as a notation, but then how how would you really write down how Morgan Ogren plays? plays that groove is it's impossible you know it's kind of like impossible and that's that's where the real magic lies and yeah. and this is this is just um that's why i love acoustic instruments so much you know and in a way uh, me playing an electric instrument i i i sometimes feel like like i'm jealous you know i would love to play an acoustic guitar or yeah. Or even drums, right? You know, something where where there's just just even more. You're even closer to the sound, yeah. you know, somehow. And uh, so that's why you know, like being in that band generally, like, was just absolutely amazing. But then you know, like standing next to you and getting these uh, <laughs> super detailed things at me thrown at me was just so wonderful, you know. And and you know, like. Um, I spoke with uh, with Mike Keneally about this. Then you know, like when we heard that the the band wouldn't continue that way, and uh, um, so when you guys then did the US tour, and I wasn't I wasn't part of it, um, it was was an interesting experience because obviously, like you know, I I uh, I have to say I managed to to 
stay completely positive and neutral. You know, it wasn't it wasn't feeling like I I had been uh, left out somehow. It was yeah. it, it at least I, I found a way to be to feel good about it. You know, yeah. and to understand that it was like a necessity with uh, the finances. Yeah, and stuff, right? It was uh, it was uh, like hundred percent obvious the reasons because. I mean, Devin, more than anyone, I mean, or mo as much as we at least wanted to keep the band, of course. Yeah, yeah. But, I, I, you know, after the London show, his management just told him, no, you can't do this. You will lose too much money. So yeah. he had too much fun, I guess. He had too much fun to spend too much money. and and But he will never regret. That's the cool thing. I mean, yeah. he never, ever regrets. So, and... Um, yeah <clears throat> but um yeah who knows um because now I i'm sure that the plan was to take it back but now like with everything happening in the world i don't know when when stuff can start again and in what way and what shape and form we, we will see you know yeah and and you know i'm i'm kind of like i mean it's not that i'm thinking about that very much but knowing how Devin is right that like he may change his mind like very quickly or yeah. his his field of interest like him say like the the idea of the volume two band which would do the heavy stuff right and like him having to do that next year let's say must be totally crazy for him right like he must be like in a completely different world already but then you know like probably the planning you know and everything is kind of like yeah. it's 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 an interesting it's an interesting business you know like leonardo pavkovich for example he told me that you know the way that it works with the postponement of the tours is that you know you really have to book the tour for the next year because if you don't then the dates are gone because some other bands will take them right yeah. and uh yeah i mean it's like like the current situation is 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 super interesting for creativity in two ways. So first of all, yes, maybe some interesting things happen during the pandemic, but I'm really curious about what will happen after. Yeah. So for for example, we could say, okay, maybe it will be impossible for creative uh, and uh, kind of like not mainstream acts to tour. This would be one scenario. But the other scenario would be that exactly these special you know projects may actually work you know yeah. so and and sort of that's what i'm what i'm hoping for a little yeah. bit yeah uh, um i think that <clears throat> um you know like uh, in six months or whatever will take before venues can start open up again he has already released like uh, <laughs> another two albums like puzzle and Puzzle and, and Snaggle is not maybe like a, a regular release because it's more like a media slash movie slash uh, art project sort of a thing. So it's 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 not only like uh, here is ne Devin Townsend's next album. I, I think it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. different. So <clears throat> and by then, like um, in six months from now, I don't know how long you can tour like on an album but we didn't we didn't play i mean we played other stuff than on empath anyway so we we yeah. can we can do it of course yes uh, yes yeah yeah i i um, let's hope i mean he, everyone knows that he wants and then there is the record company they want something too and i think he it's many factors that needs to come together i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so with your your personal like touring um it was mostly as you were saying it was mostly a much morgan band right for yeah for the last yeah. 30 years if we can say yeah right? yeah, yeah actually uh, the first 10 years was in our hometown it wasn't much like we weren't traveling that much but mm -hmm. uh, the the next 
the next um, 30 years we, we played and traveled Europe, we played in Japan and stuff. You know, we never had, a, we, for a few years, we had a guy in France, uh, Alex in France. He he happened to see us play at some festival in, in France and he offered his help to, to book us. So so he booked us for a couple of years in France, uh, like with without any finances. I think he got some support from some art councils in France mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he did the cultural work, work sort of. So uh, as far as I know, he, he, he wasn't even allowed to get paid when he booked and traveled with us, mm -hmm. but he, he did great work for us. I think he, we played maybe 20 gigs in total in uh, like two years, three years um, span. Mm -hmm. uh, so so he helped us but uh, other than him we never had a booking agent we never had any help you know so it's like um, we uh, i mean we we got to do nice things we 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 played us japan and europe and but it 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 could have been more it could it would have been nice like to have a record company that works together with a a booking agent or whatever and yeah. the booking agent knows when there is a record coming and then they book the tour they work together and we take care of the music they take care of the rest that wasn't the case and never the case for us mm -hmm. so um you know so, so, so I, I i had to do other things of course too you know so I, it wasn't possible to only play with mats hey, so tell me a little bit about how the mats morgan band kind of like worked or works with uh like the other musicians kind of like uh, is it was it always the same guys or all did it was it always changing or because it, i don't know the names of those guys yeah, at all so. we we started as uh you know the the some from the beginning this was in 81 i, I got a a phone call from actually i i think i have a let me see i i think i just recently found Yes, so this this lady there in the middle, who whose name I I can't even remember, but she called me one day, nineteen eighty one, and he she asked me, "Can you uh, or would you be interested in coming to this music cafe and play drums with this piano player?" I I, I read about you in the magazine. That you play drums and you seem to be in the same age as this piano player. Uh, this piano player will play three songs at this little jazz club, and I thought that you will be a good match with him. Uh, and th that was probably my first call ever. ever you know, I was fourteen, <laughs> and um, so I went to the venue. I met Mats for the first time at the same day as we were supposed to play. So we, we went to the venue like um, uh, three hours before the show. I don't know why we didn't meet before, but so we shook hands and hello, hello. And then we needed to decide three songs. So so he asks me, do you, do you know uh, Frank Zappa? He says, and I, I said, well, I, I know who he is, but I, I I only know this song called Bobby Brown. I said, do, do you know that one? And, and he said, yeah, I, I know that one. I said, okay, so let's play that one. And then he goes, do you know Steve Wonder? He said, and he's still holding my hand, you know, because we just met him. Yeah, Steve Wonder. Mm. And then for some reason, a friend of mine, his older brother play Hotter Than You Lie. Every time we played in his house, this album was on. And I just remember that first track on Hot Today July that starts Greco, 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 Cactu. I don't know the name of it, but do you know that <laughs> one? Yeah, that's Master Blaster. He says, uh, Okay, do you know it? Can you play it? Yes, I can play it. So he's 10, you know. Okay, now we have two songs, and then, Okay, do you know Beatles? He said, And I, I, the only song I know by Beatles that I can play, I think, is Help. Do you know that one? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I know. So whatever I knew, he knew, you know. So, so we had we had we had three songs, and we had a little sound check, and I couldn't believe, uh, you know, um, he he was ten, but he looked like he was seven, maybe six, very little, you know. He played Fender Rhodes electric piano, 
and I just played and sang like perfect English like and I could you know I was just sitting and watching him and play these songs and I couldn't believe my ears and my eyes and uh, he was so also so young so his mother told him that he couldn't sing the ugly words on Bobby Brown so then like and you can tell the girls that they can kiss my da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so he was like too young to say sing mean words you know so he left those words out and um, it was crazy and after the show we met his father and my father took us there by car and we we met backstage like this was super small like a, a, a cabin that took maybe 30 people 20 people maybe super 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 small so we, we we went somewhere in the room and and you know and i could see my father and matt's father were um, at least my father was uh, almost crying because he witnessed he witnessed this you know mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. seeing matt play this and seeing me play with him and create the music on the spot with no rehearsal like nothing yeah. and we managed to play together and and matt's father told me straight after like yeah maybe you can come home to uh, we we have drums in our apartment then you know you can come to, to play with Mats again maybe you, you uh, so he really wanted me to come mm -hmm. back you know so this was in november 81 and uh, and we never stopped like we played uh, for forever since then so, but we started as a duo so piano drums and then we found because nobody like Matt's friends who were 10, they didn't want to play this music. I mean, 10 years old, they were listening to not this kind of music and the same for me. So, so it was really hard to find people with the same musical interest, but suddenly you find some guy like uh, we had this guy, Henrik, he played trumpet and he liked like Spyro Gyra and Miles Davis and stuff like that. And uh, so we, oh, that's cool. We play, we play with him. So we had piano, drums and trumpet, no bass, like uh, strange settings. And then we found the bass player. And then I think we continue as a duo. And then, but I think we formed the Matt Morgan band, like the quintet we formed in 94, maybe something like that. So then we had the, the bass player that plays on those TV shows that I did, you know, um, mm -hmm. his name is Tommy. So we had Tommy on bass and we had a second keyboard player and my brother play, play guitar. So that band we formed like 94, I think. And we play with that quintet until, I can't remember exactly, but the second keyboard player got to play with like a big uh, Swedish pop uh, artist. So we, we sort of lost him to that. And then we went from quintet to trio. So we, we and Tommy moved to the US. So we were just the two of us again, me and Mats. And then uh, we started to play with Gustav, uh, bass player. who, who played, and That was still uh, in the 90s? This was in, uh, no, this was in 2000 something, like okay. um, 2005, maybe something. Okay, so the five. band with, with Tommy was like 10 years and then yeah. with Gustav. Yeah. yeah, so we played trio with Gustav and then... Who, five... who, is, who is Gustav? Tell, tell me Gustav, Gustav Jem, he played with some local bands that I knew and he was also playing a couple of years with Meshuga. He was the bassist for Meshuga between, I, I can't remember, but he was late, I, I can't remember exactly when, but he played with them for three years maybe. And he wrote to me many years ago saying that if you ever need a bass player, you, you know, uh, so I, I kept his name in my mind. And when we needed a bass player, I, I, I thought that we should get together with this guy. So he's great too. So we played as a trio with him for a couple of years. And then in 2014, I think we went to Japan and I, I had my, uh, my solo album just finished but read the looks and uh, we needed really needed a keyboard player that could do all the samplings you know so mm -hmm. we, we we found this stefan who, who 
was also a local guy that I knew. He he played keyboards and he plays also guitar. So then we we formed that quartet, me, Mats, Gustav, and Stefan, and we played with that band basically until Mats ears went out of function when we celebrate shortly after we celebrated the 35th year anniversary in 2016. Yes. Mm -hmm. After that, in 2017, Matt's ears started to be really problematic and um, he couldn't play like at all. So the band didn't, you know, I, I, I did other stuff. Matt was taking it, trying to, to get better with his ears and stuff. And so the band hasn't been active like almost at all we we opened for like 2000 we, we did two gigs opening two three gigs opening for for magma as a 30 minutes thing just me as a duo again just me and Mats. and then we did in june last year we did a live stream from the swedish radio also just the two of us which was one of the best gigs we did ever like uh, that was oh. super nice because it was very fragile H his ears we didn't know if this was possible to do but it 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 actually worked and it actually worked very good so we, we managed to do some really nice music there and um but that's it you know so we we hadn't played much since the 35th year uh, 35th uh, anniversary just a couple of short gigs but uh, not more so we you know um, that uh, various reasons has uh, st stopped us from playing actually you know what what is interesting to me is that um it's been a relatively stable band if you, you know, see it that way if like you know like 10 years with one guy and then five years with another or even more right like the it's uh, so it that is sort of like um um also something that's kind of special i find you know like if you know there's if there's like a relative like stability uh, within uh musical communities you know yeah i mean some bands exist only in one tour and that's it i, I know that so yeah <laughs> we we were playing mm -hmm. We were playing uh, quite a lot with each setup, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this this uh, duo show you did last year is that uh, is that going to be on the in the box set or? Yeah, for sure. Uh, the thing with the live stream is that uh, when it's live, I think we had three cameras, and even though they you know they they do the camera the change from camera one to camera two and everything gets live on there. But everything is recorded, you know, so so we can go back and we can remix also, you, you know, th there could be pictures like uh, scenes that's that was great that wasn't used because it was live, you know, so I spoke with this guy only a couple of days ago and I have uh, I have the sounds here. So I have remixed a little bit and, and the sound is fantastic. And the performance, you know, because we played at the Swedish radio and, and a friend of me and Mats works there. So he arranged uh, like a super big uh, grand piano. Uh, we had Celeste, like a Celeste. We had Cembalo and uh, all these tools because the, the Swedish uh, radio house has everything you need, you know. So we, we, we had a nice setup, you know, and all Neumann microphones and just super cool equipment and then we we just played live you know and um so I'm, I'm i'm just finishing the mixing now and i'm gonna get together with the camera guy and he will go through the material and we will do like a, a, a different mix than was mm -hmm. sent live mm -hmm. wonderful and was was that uh was that written material mostly or improvised there was maybe if i would say maybe 50 50 maybe 60 40 60 being improvised and 40 written uh, so, so we had like a song list but we had like backtracks a few backtracks a few songs without backtracks maybe uh, but then there was like uh, 
you know, in the song list, we, we were, you know, we have, we open up with that jam and then we go to this song and then third piece will be the, the improvised, uh, improv improvised part with the cembalo. Mm -hmm. we, we, we decided like which settings to be used in which order Th that could also change while we were playing. But uh, so we decided when to use that and that instrument sort of so, so, but, uh, but improvisation was <clears throat> a lot of um, the, the, like um, the, um, the thing for for me and Matt from from day one, you know, because we improvised a lot. He was too young to 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 write music, and and I didn't write music at all. I mean, I, I still have. I mean, it could still be a struggle to write music that you really like. It's it's. I think it's um. It's not easy because it's so personal. Sometimes it's just really hard to compose. I think. But in those days, I mean, I was 14, so I, I, I was just playing drums and he was, he was so young, you know, he was, he was 10, but he was, was like, his mind was even younger. So he, he has all these recordings, tape record, cassette recordings of us rehearsing in those days. And uh, it's funny because he he talks about uh, you know i can hear on those recordings i just want to play you know because i knew he can't he can't sound like chick korea i just want to play you know but he is like uh, uh, he wants to scratch vinyls or he wants to you know just like a kid you know so it was like sometimes frustrating because i i i, I could tell that there is a potential here but he was more like too young you know um, um but um i forgot what we, what we were talking about now but yeah just uh, just the the writing versus improvisation and uh... yeah 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 exactly because in those days it was hard to create songs so we improvised you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that we became we came, became good to to we became good um improvisers with each other you know because we learned how to communicate very fast and uh, i mean sometimes there is also limits on that because if you know somebody someone really well um i mean that that happened that happens even like for a short tour that we did only like a month you already know now comes now he's gonna solo now she's gonna solo you 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 know a, a little bit like uh, not exactly but uh, you know how people play and even if it's improvised you sort of know if i do that he will do that and you know so sometimes knowing who you play with especially someone like Mats, like which can sometimes be like almost like uh, telepathic you know it's like i i i, I really know how, what he will do now sometimes that's like an old marriage you know it's like shit give me something new give me surprise me please surprise me so mm -hmm. so it's not always only a good thing being super tight played one million years together that could also have uh, limits you know so you i i guess after all these years you have to find new things to come to new directions you have to again like in a marriage you have to surprise you have to do something new that makes new things happen, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, but again, improvisation was a major part, I think. You know, like the longest musical relationship that I have is 25 years. And, uh, and I have to say, th the fact that we, well, and we only improvise together, right? So it's, it's been, it's amazing like what you say, like this telepathic connection. And then really, the, the interesting thing is that he was, his name is Bernhard, you know, and it's my Ben Central zone. And, yeah. and, and so, so like he, back, back then, he was always surprising me, right? And he still does. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. Yes. That's great. Yeah, and that's, that's just incredible, you know? And, and it's funny because like um, sometimes, I remember we played a show. I think it was two thousand four, and it was like in a like more of like a arts 
center kind of thing in Münster, Germany. And we played that show. And after the show, we knew this was, this was the end for a while. And it was actually five years we didn't play. Really? Yeah. Five years we didn't play. But then we went back on the road again. We played like 20 shows or something on a, a like self-organized tour in Europe. Uh, and and uh, why, why, do, why, do, why do you think, uh, how come you knew that it was like the last gig in, in a while? Yeah, you know, like it felt like there wasn't any more ammunition somehow, like it was ah. kind of empty and sort of like, I don't think we really enjoyed that, that last uh, yeah. concert very much. And, and it was funny because like we've always had, from our perspective, successful uh, co-creation, like even live, like at home and, you know, in the studio and live. But that one show really felt like Okay, we've we've done enough for a while yeah. and and it it was interesting because then we we you know we started again and everything was fine you know yeah. but like we really needed that break you know it was it was after the first like 10 years almost like of playing together you know and it was it was it was really interesting and and um like last last year december we played together again like a live stream <laughs> here yeah. at this at actually at this table that i'm sitting at and it was wonderful and um nice. yeah you know I, i i'm a real i'm a fan of long-term relationships you know like with with people but also with with music and with like what you were mentioning like the uh the first albums you fell, fell in love with or the buddy rich performance and like these yeah. things i think it's important to to kind of like keep in touch with these yeah. uh with these inspirations you know yeah, yeah. I, i get super nostalgic sometimes you know um, and same thing as because you mentioned how you felt when um, frank died and uh, mm -hmm. i had a similar you know the same message the same feeling a uh, close uh, not not as strong maybe but not very much different uh, feeling uh, still was uh, now when chick rea died because mm -hmm. uh, He's also that, like, no, he, it's like he can't, he must be here, sort of, you know, it's, it's, because uh, yeah. I would say one of the top five albums in my life that, because, um, um, so there would be uh, Holesworth, I mean, uh, Road Games, uh, UK, the first album by UK, And then uh, Heavy Metal B, Bob Breaker Brothers, and um, um, Romantic Warrior by, by Return Forever. That album, maybe maybe I listen to that, like if, if I say, would say top three albums in my life that, that, that I listen to most, I think uh, um, Romantic Warrior might be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was... I don't know if I was 14 something uh, or 15 when I heard it and it it was like this crazy experience with the the compositions uh, the playing and the sound I love this the drum sound on that album it's just crazy the the like uh, over compressed cymbals and the, the mm -hmm. big tom tom <laughs> And it's like shit. I was listening so much to that. Um, so um, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So you you were saying to, to coming back to those albums. I, I I still do. You know. Sometimes I, I just uh, I even bought Romantic Warrior. I had to buy. I was because. I'm also a nerd when it comes to remastering. Uh, like uh, when something is remastered, I I I find it very interesting to. Because I mix and I, I mix and master my own things, and it's, it's super interesting to like an album that was recorded in the 70s that sound that good. If it comes out now like a remaster, will they just mash it? Will they destroy it? Will they, what will they do? Like, so I found the um, like um, a Japanese version that said blue disc, not Blu-ray, blue disc, and I thought that. And not, you know, th this other format called the uh, uh, HD, S, what, what's the name of those CDs? SHD, Super Disc CD. Super, uh, super Audio CD, SACD, yeah, right? 
S A, yeah, exactly. S -A yeah. I was looking for that, but I couldn't find that. So I found this other thing that called blue blue disc or something, not mm -hmm. Blu-ray. So mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's the same. It doesn't it's um so so there is three versions you know colombia has all those albums by all those artists from the 70s mahavishnu and everyone that has uh it says the colombia and then there is like a red frame around it yeah. i got that one when that was released early and then some 15 years later all those albums came again with 20 bit remastering and a little bit new cover so i got that one and that that 20 bit remastering is exactly the same i already imported them to my protos i i i, I listen to them it's, it's the same mm -hmm. uh, but then i bought um, return forever anthology and which is a very nice uh, compilation and every song is uh, remixed not not the remastered it's remixed oh. so that was super interesting because if you listen to those sections that i like like on, on the first song on romantic warrior i was like how will will they will the toms sound like on the original or what will happen you know it it still sounds good and the the volume is stronger and everything is just krr. something is missed in the original but there is other things that sounds maybe even better in, in another way i would if i have to choose i would still choose the original i think because that's how it is you know but um you know, you know, there are some uh, um, some of my favorite albums from my youth that I actually bought the uh, five point one mix, and I made a I made a, a how do you call it? like grab the files of the five point one mix, so you can like kind of like remix your own oh, from yeah. the five point one, and you can you find like really new elements that you haven't heard before because yeah. they were buried in the mix and stuff, and I, I find that kind of. Uh, you know that's that's what i was talking about that's kind of like the love right like yeah. even even 50 years later yeah, yeah, you're yeah. still you're still interested in finding like this this yeah. detail right <laughs> like... I know. but you know sometimes i i find it uh disturbing when they change stuff you know like mm -hmm. like another album that i listened to top three it would be one of a kind bill bruford uh he released um a box set mm -hmm. of uh uh, you know and it's remixed yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, i i love him and i it's super cool that he he do that you know and i support whatever but to me when, when you know the song hell spells yeah. you know and suddenly uh, something is different I, I i don't like it i i i really want to have the original you know they can i i'd be happy to hear a remaster of the same mix but mm -hmm. suddenly the bass is too loud or too low or something it's just um, sometimes yeah. it's annoying with the remixes yeah yeah you know like for me it's just like seeing something from a different perspective and if you want the old mix you can always go back to it yeah, 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 if yeah. it still is out there you know like i know that with uh, some even like uh, successful albums it's it's hard to find like the first edition of the first mix and stuff like that. I know that yeah. is also a problem. Yeah. Some things, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, um, in October, you know, I started my Living the Dream event series in June, I think, last year, and so I was de doing these um, almost always improvised meetings, you know. And some of them were more like interviews, um, and there was one with Gary Husband that oh, yeah. I did with, with Gary Husband in October. Yeah. And actually, uh, Gary had invited a lot of people. And actually, one of the people guys who were there was 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 Chick. Oh, yeah, Chick, yeah, was, yeah. Chick was in my in my Living the Dream meeting. And oh, so yeah, yeah. and so it was like totally bizarre to me uh, when I heard of his death, you know, that it felt like it was yesterday yeah. uh, when when he was you know, there and like I never met him before, but um, it, yeah, kind of intense. You know, like you go from from being alive yeah. <laughs> to being that. <dead. laughs> it's, it's tragic. 
yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I did. I didn't see that coming at all because uh, I mean, in Frank's case, you knew it would happen. Yes. Yeah. Sooner or later, because he was ill. But I, I didn't know anything uh, chic, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you're you're healthy, right? I don't know. I, I I should exercise a bit more, but I I feel okay. And now it's um, and now when you get that question, you you sort of answer in the way that yes, I'm I am healthy. I don't have the COVID, but uh, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I think uh, if you know if I would live like a single man, I would eat worse food and I would live more unhealthy but because of my wonderful wife i think we we um, come you know um because of her when it comes to that part she she's more uh, organized when it comes to you know cert certain things you know so i'm i'm happy you know she she's a good cook and she also wants to eat healthy which makes me also want to do that you know so yeah yeah, yeah I've, um, I, I I know I should, um, but now it's hard to, you know, I mean, you can exercise at home, but going to the gym now is not a good idea yeah. Yeah. to be yeah. with people. But do, yeah. do you, are, do you, do you feel in, in shape? Um, no, no, the, you know, like the, the, the problem for me is that I went from being like a guy who was always running around somebody who does a lot of this like sitting in front of the computer talking to people like like yeah. the teaching and you know like everything like creating content for youtube and stuff like that you know and and it hasn't been great for me so i'm i have to say i'm looking forward to um being on the road again to move more and yeah. and uh, even though like you know i could do it here but it's still it still sort of like feels like a little bit like early days with learning how to deal with you know the household and the baby and and like this new situation of having to kind of like work when the baby's not around you know and these things and so no i'm not i'm not feeling super healthy i i have to uh and i will um i have to change something about that it's yeah. just the sitting it's just the sitting around that is kind of yeah. like you know i've never in my life did i have uh, back issues right really never in my life and like just recently, I've started to notice, oh, it's the sitting, yeah. you know, and my back gets stiff. And, you know. Yeah, well, I, I got the first, for the first time, I, I don't have a perfect posture when I sit, but I, I never had back problems. But Rich had back problems, I know, because I, I don't know, he was like this, maybe. But for the first time in my life, my, my shoulder starts to like, uh, you know, like two months ago, three months ago, Every night when I go to bed and I just place the pillow, like it's like, oh, what the fuck was that? Like some, like so when I lie on my right side and I push my hand up like that, feels like I get a knife in here. Mm -hmm. So uh, and I was okay, that would go away. I was thinking and I yeah, just don't think about that too much. But then it never really didn't went away and then i went to the local you know like the local doctor here and and i got sent to this x-ray and they took x-rays and then everything was fine there was nothing wrong with the with the skeleton skeleton uh, skeleton what, what do you say the, the bones were fine you know so then i met some other one because i, I it, it's not a problem for me during the days until i do a certain movement if i like a tennis serve it would kill me you know if i do that because i can i can play it doesn't matter but if i go here if i move my hand now fast from this direction forward then it hurts like hell so now i met somebody that told me okay um they did them um, um uh, what do you say um, um they see it through um, X-ray, like um, ultra light, uh, ultrasound. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he told me that uh, there is a muscle behind your shoulder that's really 
needs exercise. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I'm I'm just uh, I got uh, some exercises to do, and uh, he said that it could take me <clears throat> two months before I get better. But it's not 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 a big uh, thing. I don't know where it came from because you say you have back problems, which comes from sitting too long, mm -hmm. maybe. But this yeah. I don't know why. But mainly because no exercise. That that's yeah, the yeah, problem. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I wish we had. Uh, I wish we had the <clears throat> focus that Devin had. If you remember during the tour, mm -hmm. he has to go to the gym, and I, I was so impressed that he could kept. I went. I went with him once. Yeah, me too. Maybe <laughs> also twice. once. Oh, twice. Uh, even. Okay. twice. <laughs> <laughs> you win. <laughs> yeah, I win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we should. Uh, we should. Um, we should take care. Start because. The older we get, the more important it gets. I think we yes. we can't we can't escape the fact that we get older. I think yeah, that's that's very true. <laughs> yeah, that's super true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know, at least like for me, uh, with ha having the baby, it's it's total, total like the most extreme change in my life. And yeah, of course. And in, in combination with, with the pandemic and with um, the, the need to find some other source of income, right? Like my, my whole life is, is, is getting mixed up at the moment, right? And I, I don't really know where it's going to go. And I find that on, in a way, I find that super attractive. You oh, know, yeah. I'm kind of, kind of happy that I don't know where I'm going to be in two years somehow. I don't yeah. know why, but that's kind of like my my personality. I'm, that's, I'm, that's the right way to be. I mean, you should be happy about that. I mm, think just yeah. not, not everyone can handle that mindset. Yeah, yeah. Because like for me, it's all kind of like based on experience. Like if I look back, right? So my life has always been, I, I always found a way. Let's just put it that way. Right? Yeah. So and and I feel like um, I feel confident that that is also going to be the case um, after the pandemic. That there's going to be there's going to be a way. Yeah. Hey, we didn't we didn't have any wine. I I I want I um I have this left. You you have a glass? No, I do not, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh, I, 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 I I have a like a, a piece of apple from my daughter that's left over from today. Yeah, that's so, good. So that's the, cheers. That <laughs> this is a gin and tonic. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes I I send text messages to Diego because for some reason when we rehearsed for the yeah for the European tour. Um, for some reason, I, I had uh, more beer, beers with him in the hotel reception than than with I don't know. It just happened that way. So after rehearsals, me and, and Diego said uh, a beer, yes, like that. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes um, uh, I, I text him. You know, just out of the blue, I text him. I mean, I'm in the reception. Uh, you want to <laughs> join? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and he writes back. I, I'm down in five minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Okay, my friend. Let's let's maybe leave it at that for today. These were like very very good last words from you and Diego. Oh, and, and <laughs> exactly. And uh, yeah, it was super nice to 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 speak with you and to see you. And um, again, it was equally nice to to play with you and travel with you and as i said before it was everyone had um, it was such so cool to have uh, um everyone's personality and uh, that's it that includes you as well <laughs> of course and of course. Uh, yeah I, I hope we uh get get to to, to meet soon and, and play and and uh, I think in maybe two weeks, it's my time to get the vaccine. Uh, people from 66 
born 66 mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, from that age will be uh, called now you know so i think uh, within um, one or two weeks and yeah. um, i think devin he told me i texted with him this morning he said uh, yeah, like he he's also getting the first shot like in uh, two weeks, one or two weeks, I think. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I, I get mine in the first week of June. Oh, yeah. So in three weeks, about three weeks. Yeah, yeah so, so let's hope that changes things not only for us, but for the whole world. And we can yeah. meet in the reception and have a beer and play. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, Morin. Um, let's let's talk privately um, soon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, we we um, yeah. So when when is this going to be out? Um, probably in uh, two or three weeks. Okay. I, I you know I have already recorded a lot of uh, conversations. Oh, yeah. Um, I I did six with Trey Gunn. Oh, six yeah. of this yeah so uh, like almost almost 12 hours <laughs> of conversation <laughs> it's incredible yeah and and i'm i'm kind of like trying to collect and just to see like how you know how many people want to talk with me and and originally i wanted to do um one uh one podcast per week for this year yeah but i have already recorded 40 and it's only may right so okay. um yeah, so I don't know exactly, but I think maybe in in two three weeks. Okay. Yeah, and I'll, I'll 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 let you know. But you you do it good. You are you are a thinker and a philosopher. I think like um, you 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 do this good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, it's just it's just I just do it because I want to do something. Yeah, I, I see. Right? You know, like there's no there's no real real aim, and but I think. Like what I think I said it before today, like that it's about, I, oh, I said it to somebody else, that it's sort of like almost like solidifying uh, the network a little bit, right? Because yeah. you see, like I talk with you, I talk with Phil Gould, I talk with Trey, I, I talk with David Singleton, you know, like then I talk with Robert Fraser and, and also other people who are kind of like not so closely related, but... I think it's great for people from the outside to kind of like understand these relationships then, you yeah. know, like yeah. which uh, back then when we were reading the liner notes, right, you were making these connections, but nowadays it's difficult to make these connections. And so that's also, I think, one of the reasons why I enjoy this so much. Yeah. Because it brings everybody closer together somehow. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Well, send my our greetings to to the family and the little one and um, i i speak to you soon and yeah so i i hope that alvin is is behaving uh very well <laughs> <laughs> he, he he is uh this much uh, about this much taller than me now yeah yes <laughs> i can believe it's, that it's crazy and <laughs> yes. um yeah he's strong yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay Say hi to your family yes. as well. Bye yeah, for now. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. Take care. See you. Take care.